And welcome back Ahoy Arena for the LEC Spring Split Final 2019. I am standing with Ocelot this time. What a crazy game, pure madness. I mean, Fionnel is back, Cap was playing Pike. It's not about winning for you guys, it's about putting a show, right? Honestly, everybody here is like laughing or having fun, entertaining themselves. I have no voice left because I can't take these games. I mean, when I see them picking triple support, what was that, triple support? I just, I just my voice just goes off, you know? It's, it's too much pressure. You enjoy it, my heart just implodes. Yeah, and it's a headache for every analyst here. I mean, can we expect more crazy things like that in the game to come? Here's the thing. They can play whatever the fuck they want. It's unbelievable, so... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and then you have a really um, creative coaching staff that also allows them uh, with their madness. They pick heroes because they like the skin, not because it makes sense in their setup. It doesn't make any sense. But it works anyway. I mean, you have an amazing lineup here with the superstar, mid laner, MVP. What are your thoughts on G2 this year as you guys are about to take it all? I don't know if we're going to win today, hopefully. Um, truth is that when we created the team, we wanted to dream about one day winning Worlds. We don't know it's going to happen, right? But uh, the only thing we can do is increase the chances of that happening for, uh, you know, to win Worlds for Europe. Um, in the past, we haven't done uh, perhaps uh, as well in Worlds and MSI. Uh, nice memories there. But um, <laughs> it's our intention to redeem and eventually bring the cap home. So this team was created with our purpose. Yeah, and I'm really happy for you guys. I mean, listening to the crowd today, so many people cheering for you. It's amazing. Give, give them a shout out, come on. That was amazing, really. I, you know, it, it, it's heartwarming to see uh, all the players working so hard, you know, um, and all these people cheering for them. It really warms my heart. And uh, I actually wanted to say uh, something for the fans as well, because now that this is such a beautiful moment, you know, uh, this is the jersey that all these players are playing with. If you want it, g2esports.com slash shop. <laughs> nice promo there. Thank you, Oslot. And back to the casters. Our G2 are on game point right now. Take it away, guys. Uh, let me see, what was, what was that URL? So it's, can someone help me sell us again? G2. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Carlos. Congratulations, G2. You are 2 0 up, one Nexus away from securing the fifth championship for G2 Esports after failing to pick up one last year. This is where the G2 dynasty began. Yes, it is. And this is where it may be born anew. And last time these two teams played up against each other, it was 3 1. Origin, they were not the same Origin that made it to the semifinals at Worlds, but they were still a strong team. It still had the Sven Mithy bot lane, and this is where I turn my eyes back to those legacy players. This is where I look at the likes of people like Mithy, like Nuke Duck, those historic veterans, to keep their mental in check and to be the big carries to at the very least bring OG back into this series. And while we are looking at the origin side, you know, this is not a scenario. We've seen some global best of fives where it felt like one team was just choking. One team just collapsed underneath the pressure. This origin still looks very strong. But like you said, Trevor, it's just that gap between a strong team and what G2 is. They make you look like you are nothing. And so Origin are gonna have to pull out all of the stops if they wanna contest and stand even a chance here at bringing us to game four. Oh yeah, they certainly are. Now the bands are staying relatively similar. Uh, in game two, we saw exactly the same thing from Origin. Now remember last week, when they played up against G2, they said, you know what, we can just do our draft again. And this time we'll, we'll, we just need to change the execution and we'll be better, we'll do it better. And they lost game three faster than they lost game two. Uh, this time round, they have kept the bands the same. The question is, will they keep the picks the same? I would expect a Rek'Sai priority pick. I do want to point out the Sona adaptation here, which is curious because G2 already shown that if you give away the Sona Terek, that they know how they want to play against it. But they maybe know it's how to a one-time thing so that if uh, it works because it catches you off guard, but if you know how to play against it, uh, maybe it doesn't isn't as effective. So I like the fact that G2's showing that respect. Or maybe G2 just want to flex even harder. Maybe. <laughs> Well, take a look at the round one picks here. Rise and Jarvin secured. If this Jarvin lands up in Wonder's hands, he is undefeated. Three games played, 8, 2, and 25. Big changes already in the draft, so let's see how Origin decides to 
continue this because the pressure is on Origin. They have to make the big changes to cause the, 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 the change in the series. And there it is. Okay, we talked about the Sona ban. One of the bans that did slip through, 100% ban record against Origin was that Draven. And now that it is open, you immediately see Patrick grab hold of it. This is a champion that he is known for, that he is feared for. So Origin, we wanted them to pull out the stops. We wanted them to find comfort picks. They have got exactly what they want in their first three picks of this draft. Come on, quick shot. You got to hit us with the stats. This is your area of expertise, Draven for, for Origin on Draven. Three games played, two wins, one loss. I didn't jump into the excitedness because it's not quite as flashy as the undefeated. But do you want to know how many kills he's got? It's Tell me. 10. It's 10 kills. The man likes to play aggressive and the fact that they have this strong Galio Draven bot lane means that they can make a lot of plays towards the bot side of the map. And this is very good for Origin. Something that Frost and I felt very strongly coming into this series was you can't afford to have a losing two versus two against the likes of G2 because they will exploit it. And the fact that G2 lock in Tom Kench means that this is probably the most standard draft we're going to get this year. And that's what we wanted to see. You know, Origin seem to excel when they just play standard League of Legends when they get to control tempo. So finally, we don't have, you know, a Sona and Tarek in the game, or we don't have a crazy funnel composition. This should be the best case scenario, the best uh, leverage playing field for Origin to actually make a statement. Well, let's see what Alfari can do to turn this around. Two games in a row, he's been bullied by Wanda. You can see Cannon already taken off the table there. If Wanda's going to be taking that rise in the top lane, Gangplank taken away as well. There's still some options here to flex. And for Origin, they're still looking for their solo lanes. But Alfari's still going to be put in a position, pending on what this pick is from yeah. G2, where he's going to have to blind pick or probably blind pick his matchup because, again, the flex potential from G2's uh, champion pools. Now I'm looking at what else Origin can look to ban away. Interestingly, they ban away the LeBlanc again. This suggests that they're expecting the rise to be up towards the top side of the map. Vladimir is a champion that we see no priority on. Oh, look, it's Nico. Oh, <laughs> That's hello. a Nico bot lane. That's a Nico bot lane. Could it go mid? I mean, it could, of course. Uh, I just My expectation is that when you pair it up with a Tarek, it's like one of those very safe lanes where you can look to be very aggressive and in the event of a gank, you have that safety and survivability. I'm sure everyone's been seeing Attack Speed Nico just absolutely dominate their games. We did try to, you know, pull some strength yep. out of it, but it still feels like it went from incredibly oppressive to still pretty good. All right, now the response though. Aatrox and Akali. This is a very big departure and change from Origin's team composition. What do you make of it, Frost? I mean, it felt like, again, you had to blind pick. You don't exactly know where everything is sliding. The fact that we're having this discussion, is it Nico bot lane? Is it Nico mid lane? Where is this rise going? Maybe it's Jarvin. So I feel like Origin were just kind of hedging their bets. Grab a Kali and Aatrox. It can be flexed between both <laughs> Nukeduck yeah. and Alfari. And let's figure out where we want to slot our tools. So of course G2 would run out their draft with a Jace. Why wouldn't they? Why not triple flex in game three where you're uh, one game away from securing the championship? It's a quadra flex. It's a <laughs> G2 are demonstrating the, what they have been so good at throughout the entirety of the split, which is their flex picks. And many teams said that, oh, you don't have that many flex picks left. With all the changes, with so many nerfs and things like Akali and Aurelia, your options are now more limited, you're more exposed, teams can beat you. But they come into playoffs, they come in prepared, and look, we still see them swapping around. 20 seconds is about to lock in. That's when they have to lock in those positions, and we will see the Nico in the bot lane going up against the Draven, and the Jace in the mid against the Akali. I want to step back and I want to look at how these two compositions meet head to head. I understand the OG cop, I'm interested in the G2 comp, but if it's the attack speed Nico, it's just swapping out that AD. Frost, well, Verdius, what do you make of the 5v5s? So I really want to talk about G2's comp and less about the 5v5 and more about their ability to split the map up. Notice how they're running the Tom Kench. What we're likely going to see is Caps in one lane, Wonder in the other, and Mickey just bringing perks to these side lanes to look for picks, look for plays. Their ability to split up the map and arguably play the best style that G2 has refined is one through one and creating chaos literally everywhere. And of course, if you actually want to watch how that plays out, twitch.tv slash riotgames to wonder, won the fan vote by a landslide. And of course, he will be using Rise on that side lane once again. He had a phenomenal performance in game two and Frosker, and he has had Alfari's number all day long. But Alfari does get a chance to kind of slap back with the Aatrox. I'm glad that you brought up the 1-3-1, one, one, the ability to split the map from G2, because Origin also have the tools to do that, and they're also a team that love to split up the map. But the goals that they do it are very different across from G2. They like to play the pressure and the objective game versus the collapse skirmish game.
All right, we'll see which one's gonna come out on top. Ladies and gentlemen, in the Ahoy Arena, put your hands together. What could be the final game of the night? G2 Esports leads the series two to zero. And hoop, Holland, hoop, look at that flag on the rift. So, as we dive into this game, the first thing I actually want to draw people's attention to is Perks's summoner spells. He is going for the Comet. He also has a Doran's Ring in his inventory, which means it looks like we're going to be seeing an AP Nico in the bot lane for us. And I know uh, over in the LPL, this was something they were actually a big proponent of. Yeah, and it, it's going to work very similar to when you see other mages like the Orianna, like the Zoe down there. The obnoxious thing about AP Nico is her ability to weave the root through the cannon wave and then just start spamming and chucking Qs on top of you. It's a very poke-oriented champion with a lot of inbuilt utility that can set up very heavy for ganks. And I want to reinforce that, remember, when that root goes through minions, the more, uh, when it goes through the root duration is increased at the end as well. So if you ever get hit by it, you end up taking so much damage. And that root goes up to three seconds at max rank, which is absolutely devastating. I mean, the fact that your CC is rewarded when you don't have priority of the lane is pretty crazy on a yep. champion. And is this Nico the answer to Draven? Is this something that you think G2 may have cooked up? What's cool is that Draven is going to put a giant target on the ground where he's going to grab his axe. I'll hold it though. All right, let's take a look. Flag, drag, very good flash from Alfari, but successful gank G2. Now back to Draven very quickly. Because he is going to uh, pretty much telegraph exactly where he's going to walk, it makes it that much easier to land the route, which does have a pretty big wind-up uh, animation on it. I will say though that in terms of the straight-up 2v2, Draven Galio should definitely have the oh, advantage. Yes. <laughs> Nico doesn't have a lot of mobility in the lane, and outside of level six, she is very squishy. And as you can see... Ooh, hello, Origin! Welcome back to Rotterdam! Just as we talk about the 2v2, the all-in power of this Draven Galio is monstrous. They catch Mickey and Perks off guard, and they find themselves first blood, but Mythi... Oh, what was that? Getting caught out by that root that you just talked about. And that's just careless from Mithy. He didn't respect the fact that the minions were dying, that he was going to take the tower aggro, and just unneeded there as now Yanko's possibly getting involved. Good, good boy, Patrick. <laughs> But damn, that could have been such a massive advantage for the side of Origin, and it immediately gets thrown away as Perks finds the counterplay. Ends up being a one-for-one -one down towards the bot side of the map, and already a lot of action in this Game 3. All right, small advantage here, obviously, on the side of OG. We need to see what Patrick can do with that teleport Draven. Alfari is continuously being pushed in. Huge wave in front of him as he's down 13 CS for now, and Nuketuck gets jumped on by Caps. Nuketuck turns it back around, takes a Mercurial Hammer shot to the face, and Caps escapes for now. Now, while we've been talking so much about the bot side of the map, the other thing we need to talk about is these two solo laners, because first I want to bring people's attention back to the World Championship of last year. One of the counterpicks that came out for Aatrox was, in fact, this rise. But I don't have time because Nuketuck's no, getting No, we do not. Once again, another flash. Yankos getting them. Continue story time. No. Nope. Mercurial Hammer once again knocking it back. If the accelerated shock blast comes down, maybe, but just not enough damage yet. So, the reason why I wanted to mention this was because this is actually a pretty advantageous uh, matchup towards the top side. And it was something that G2 drafted early on so they could flex it wherever they got the best matchup. They then saved the Jace pick for the end. And this is also considered a pretty good matchup into the Akali. I think it was popularized by Rookie as well over in the LPL. And it's something that you can just itemize early magic resistance. The Q can hit you even though you're in the fog of war. You can knock the Akali back and keep her at arm's length. And during the laning phase, you can just constantly harass her. So G2 actually have winning side lanes and they have Yankos on this Jarvan just constantly ganking in the early game. And it's a really unfortunate wave positioning as well for Nukeduck, which is why he's forced to pull cold over here. They need to get this wave under the tower and reset him because Caps is just going to continue to abuse this matchup like this. It's finally starting to push back in his favor. And we just saw a, a glimpse of Cold showing his face. The game has been played all around him. He's yet to find an opportunity. Yankos just sniffing up behind him. Thank you for the vision toggle. Observers, Cold will be looking to make the first move here on Wonder. Wonder's still got Flash available. Teleport already being channeled. The knock-up from the Umbaro will not find a target. Here comes Cap to the skies. Puts the hammer down. Alfari gets a chilling smite from Yankos. Cold, shock blasted in the bottom. He's trying to escape now. That's a Flash forward from Cap. One, two kills to G2. And it's the confidence of G2 to recognize when they can split apart. You know, they didn't over commit one way and let both kills get away or just take one. They managed to kill both people because they recognize, Yankos, you got that? Perfect. We've got this guy. 
What do you do against this G2 squad? They're running the triple teleport. Whenever you think that you can make a play in your favor, immediately there to answer like, I really want to reinforce Cold is doing what he can. He is looking for these early game plays, but G2, they always seem to have an answer to every play that you try to make. I think the unfortunate thing is that Cold is put on defensive duty. Not only did he need to babysit Nuke Duck on the Akali for the wave to come back in favor for him so he could farm safely, but he also needed to babysit Alfari because he was that far forward without the flash. So unfortunately, it's disrupting a lot of what Cold wants to do, his own game plan, to keep his laners safe. And unfortunately for Alfari, he has not had a great series. Game one, he got outclassed by one. The game two, he was hard camped. In game three, he's already been ganked. He's now had been counter ganked and has fallen even further behind. And now we see a matchup between the two mid lanes. Oh man, look at the damage. All right, Nuketech decides to go back in. Caps may find an opportunity, but there's a gigantic minion wave in front. Cold may have to body block here if any of those shock blasts come down. And you can see how devastating this matchup is. As soon as a colleague goes into the Shroud, you can pop your W with the Jace and basically just try to run her out. And then anytime she uh, leaps forward aggressively on you, you just use the E to reset and then tag her with auto attacks at a distance. Kochigit, uh, sorry, catch a glimpse of Perks and Mickey down in the bottom lane as Caps once again. He's jumping onto Nuke Duck. It's a small CS advantage. He's got himself that Hex Drinker as Alfari gets caught out by the Overload. G2 Esports, a thousand gold up at six minutes. Three kills to one. And it just feels like everything they touch turns to gold. Yeah. Uh -huh. Quite literally, because every time they touch the enemy team, it seems like they always get converted into gold, as Wanda now looking for a play onto Alfari. All right, Wanda's going to be able to sidestep out. Jankos and Alfari oh. going to look for the double tap, and Wanda just so, so beautifully done. That was really unfortunate for Alfari. He wanted to try and get the flash into Q to get the execute onto Wanda, but he got interrupted and put into his ultimate, which canceled the animation meaning he was then locked in his uh, rebirth animation, making an easy kill for the side of G2 Esports once again. Alfari, he really has been the focus for the side of G2 to try and shut down in this series. Yeah, really, really uh, difficult series for Alfari, but for OG as a whole, they had to step up. Game one was so close for so long, and a couple of decisions, a couple of moves from Perks ended up sealing the deal. Obviously, the funnel in game two was one of the most impressive outplays as a team, both from a strategic and an individual approach. And right now, G2 have got an early advantage in game three. And it's kind of the fact that we're playing as close to standard League of Legends as we could get over the course of kind of both best of fives uh, this weekend. But even then, it's not enough. We're like, okay, this is finally Origins time to strike. The, the level is, is neutral. They know exactly how they want to attack the map. Maybe they can get to their win conditions, but it doesn't matter. G2 beat them with the Funnel. They beat them with the Sonoteric, and now they're just beating them with standard League of Legends. Yep, and this uh, Perks, uh, Nico AP down bottom. A lot of damage there onto Patrick. And look at this exchange as the stand aside comes out. Perks and Mickey decide to back away for now. Waiting to see if that Pop Blossom is needed. It is not for the time being. And Cold is now making his way down south. Just a quick stop off at the Bramble back. And it feels like an, 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 an all-in is always on the cards for G2. But it's not going to happen just yet. Looks like right now Cold looking for something, but he will get spotted out by a ward. Origin doing a good job of controlling the river. But I don't know if it's enough as we see an all-in in the bottom. All right, there we go. Pop Blossom was used. Mickey is very, very low. Mickey throws out the winds of war. Now the spinning axes are there. Take a look at the mid lane. Yeah, goes, goes down. Finally, OG, get another one back. But Caps has got the red buff, and he's got a lot of damage to play with. Not going to be a follow-up chase from Nukedak, who just has those long swords and the Amp Tome with the pressure, with the Draven Galio down by Patrick. He's now looking for the kill. That's a flash forward. Two men taunt. Just as punch to the face. Mithy kills Mickey. Perks runs for his life. He manages to get one. A spinning action just about do the kill. Step forward. That's one. Not enough. Look at the Bob Blossom. The roots. Not going to be the kill. Patrick has got the vamps. You got to run, Patrick. He's staying alive for now. No flash available. Going to just get the clone. Caps. Shock blast. Not going to be enough. And it's Perks. That's on the killing spree. That fancy Look. footwork. <laughs> Beautiful stuff there from Perks. Caps ends up coming down, forcing Patrick to have to dive underneath the turret. 
But let's have a look back at how this play in mid lane happens. So it ends up being a 2v2 between mid and junglers. Now remember, Rek'Sai and Akali, very strong in the two versus two, and their focus was just to execute caps, but they turned their attention onto Yankos because he looked like he was going to kill Cold. The problem is that that then bounces Cold into caps, allowing him to grab that red buff. So while this may look like a pretty even one for one trade, the Jace getting the red buff just makes this matchup that much harder and gives him so much more pressure in the one versus one. And it's also the fact that Nuke Duck wasn't the pickup of that kill that in fact went to the Rek side. So not only did he lose the red buff, but that's also caps with extra gold, walking oh. him down. I was waiting to see if Mickey could have got that Devour down. Wasn't able to do so and Cold, it's so tough. I'm looking at him trying to position around this bottom lane. Like I said a moment or two ago, the game has been played around him. He, he simply hasn't had an opportunity to get involved until now. Mickey goes in with the Abyssal Voice. Patrick is already chunked down very, very low. Whirling Death will fly out and come back and way too late. Now Nuketag jumping in the back. Pop Blossom from Perks. AP Nico does so much damage. Nuketag unable to kill. Mickey the Cold goes down. Caps puts the hammer down. Cataclysm on the end goes, picks up another. Perks picks up a third. G2 Heathmots are destroying Origin. And it's divide and conquer from G2 in all of these team fights. Again, the fact that they let uh, their target selection is so strong that they split the team fight and they managed to kill everyone, not a single survivor on Origin's side. Absolute obliteration in the early game, but now Afari may be able to get something back. Never mind, another teleport. Wonder is just too good. He sidesteps everything, finishes the round warp, and I'm half expecting Caps to get the kill. Not gonna find it just yet, but G2 are just in, they're in another league and they are simply destroying Origin. This replay brought to you by Alienware. So the Collapse comes in with uh, the Mickey's ultimate, and you think, okay, this is actually fine for Origin because they have the TP coming in, but Patrick dies so quickly, and then the fight gets split up. So notice how Nico can just keep Nuke Duck locked up, even though he's stuck in his shroud. A great stopwatch from Mickey means that they're able to get the 2v1 against Nuke Duck. Meanwhile, a 2v2 is happening underneath the tower that Captain Yankos is just ripping through, and they end up walking away with four kills for zero. And then a second later, Caps is teleporting up into the top lane, and it's a 2v1 for Alfari. There is no room for Origin to breathe. No, oh, there absolutely is not. And while G2 are not killing Origin members yet, I'm going to take a quick opportunity to remind everybody of just how many titles uh, Perks has managed to accrue over the course of his career. Four times winner of Europe. If he wins today, which is looking very likely, he will equal Soaz and Yellowstar, the most winningest players in Europe. More important than that to me, is the fact that Yankos, Wanda, and Mickey will be picking up their first titles. Yeah, they certainly will. A lot of members, ooh. <laughs> A lot of members on the side of G2 yet to win their first title. But how can you say they don't deserve it with the performances that every G2 player has demonstrated today? Yeah, I mean, Nuketuck is now gonna get caught up by two members. He's gonna look for caps, but I don't even think he's gonna be able to find him. Still has to get through a Hex Drinker. Wanda is going to run him down. <laughs> There's more action in the bot lane. It's already over, Vedius. Ladies and gentlemen, fans of G2 in the Ahoy Arena, are you not entertained? There was huge cheers for G2 Esports earlier today. You can see why. When they first won a title in 2016, they were the new kids on the block. They were the newcomers to Europe. They won four in a row. And then what's looking like their fifth title is going to be a re-ignition of the G2 dynasty. And I think it's time for G2 to step out of the shadow of being the villains of Europe, and people need to respect them as the possible heroes. If any team is going to make the international stage tremble, it should be this one. We have never seen a collection so dominant as these five. I've said it before, I've said it again. I, I will say it again, rather. This EU roster has the potential to be the greatest European roster that Europe has ever produced. And G2 have looked so dominant in this final. Every game has looked so one-sided, and G2 have done it differently in every single game. G2 have looked so dominant this year, Vedius, and it has not stopped. Wanda will get caught up by Alfari, but I don't even know if he's got enough to kill him. Wanda's able to escape with his life, and the world ender will end Origin's world, as it is Mickey that picks up the 15th kill before 15 minutes. G2 Esports, Origin have family. Look at what you're doing to them. 
And it is just, it was a difficult series for Origin coming into it. And everything that Origin tried to do, G2 had an answer for. We are close to a 10k gold difference between these teams at 15 minutes in. It is crazy how fast G2 are just speed running. Games done quick on Origin. If you're a, if you're a European fan watching this right now, imagine what this that team is, is going to do. Very ambitious. Yeah. We'll ignore the game for POV, but I mean, <laughs> if you're a European fan watching right now, just imagine what this G2 is going to... What opportunities they have at MSI. They are obviously one nexus away from securing that position, but they have been the number one team all split. Nico Perks takes a down, Patrick. Mithy forced a flash defensively. 9,000 gold up, 16 minutes in. They, they set the quickest Baron record of the split. This is G2. They might be able to break it this game. And the... We're talking a lot about G2 and how dominant they've been, but you've got to look for a first split for this Origin squad. They have had a very impressive split so far, and while for sure this game by no means is over yet, on paper expectations are that they should not be able to come back from such a massive deficit so early on into the game. And Again, their goal at the beginning of the split was just to make playoffs. The fact that so many of these players who have uh, achieved a lot on unsuccessful teams to be able to make the final just showcases the caliber and talent that this roster does possess. And while this split, they could not compete against G2, they now have a benchmark to work towards. I mean, to be fair, no one could contest G2. Basically, they took a vacation Ooh. the back half of their summer split to prepare for this moment. One, two, three, goodbye! That's going to be a taunt out from Mithy, but G2 Esports inside the base. Can they finish this before 20 minutes? Pop Blossom goes down. Perks and the rest of G2, they may be looking to set the fastest win of European Finals history. They're pushing onto the Nexus turrets. It's 17 minutes into the game. They've got a Rift Herald to help out. G2 Esports, they're going to find one Nexus turret. The Shelly is going to go down. G2 back away. Minion Wave starts to conga line its way in. 17 minute Rift Herald Nexus Siege. That is the only consolation prize, is that Origin don't have a dancing Rift Herald at their base. Fortunately for Origin, they're looking at death in the eyes right now, and they have no answer as G2 are obliterating them. Nuke Duck now looking for at least something back. All right, a little bit of a numbers advantage here, but G2 are able to escape for now. Nuke Duck dashes forward. Void Rush from Cold comes out, devoured by some time. But look at the damage out. Mithy jumps in with the ultimate, still chasing. Origin behind, 10,000 gold. Shock Blast almost kills Cold. And you can smell the desperation from Origin. They recognize that this is the one window that they have to attack G2 before they all go back and spend all of that gold, all of those towers that they've taken down. Ladies and gentlemen, in Twitch chat, press F to pay respects because OG's funeral is coming up. Alfari gets one, it. he gets the base. The team, before 20 minutes, is looking for it. G2 Esports are looking at the Nexus. Origin, they're trying to fight back, but they cannot do it. Origin are crumbling to G2. Europe kneels to its champion, G2 Esports. The world awaits, G2. seconds. I am confirming just how much of a record that is. But this is the most dominant team Europe has ever produced. In the seven years that Europe has had a professional league, no team has ever won a game quicker than this, let alone the series winning game in front of thousands of fans in Rotterdam. This G2 looks absolutely terrifying. 
They had an insanely dominant regular season. They tapered off towards the end, but they shaped off coming into playoffs. Mickey with his wrist injuries, bringing in a sub, they overcame it all. They did not drop a game in playoffs. They demolished Origin. And they sent a message to the world that they are coming and they are ready to challenge the best. This split was about setting different expectations, the rebrand, the LEC from the EU LCS. And now what is left is to see if that this European squad can make the world kneel in the same way that Europe has. Ocelot and G2 Esports made the biggest roster move of the offseason securing caps. It has paid off leaps and bounds. Let's turn our attention to commiserations. Origin on screen right now. You have to feel for them, but this was a stylistic mismatch. This weekend was defined by rock, paper, scissors. Yesterday, scissors beat paper. OG beating Fnatic today. Rock smashed scissors. And she 2 take them down 3-0. And like you said, Origin do need to feel good about this split. They didn't expect to find themselves in the finals. This is a brand new squad assembled here today. They were consistent, second place to get them two chances through our playoff bracket. The fact that they made it to the finals, they didn't manage to find a game. Is this the beginning of another dynasty? How long will the reign last? That's a good question. Fnatic have won seven of 13 titles. G2 have won five of 13. And it's gonna be so difficult to see how you catch up to Team G2 Esports, thanking all of the fans that have come out here to Rotterdam as they head to their prize. And as they do, there is more happening in the Ahoy Arena as Law will speak with Caps, Yankos, and Grabs in just a minute. After that, Perks, Mickey, Wonder, and Ocelot will join Shocks on stage. Before that, it is the climb to the prize. It is the steps to the trophy. It is the celebration of the first LEC victors. Europe, embrace your villains because they are villains no more. This is your LEC champion and they will represent you on the biggest stage. And I believe they will impress. This roster can go so far. Yankos, Wanda, Mickey, for the first time, joining Perks, Caps, Europe, G2 Esports are your champions! Yankos, Wanda, lift that trophy. It gives me shivers. And for Yankos especially, the man has been trying for so many years. He has so many dedicated fans here in Europe, and so many just wanted to see him finally lift the trophy, and today is that day. Yankos' trophy case will finally contain one, and what a trophy to contain as well. And he was not carried to this moment. Yankos had one of the best performances of his career this split and showcasing just the depth and versatility of what he's able to do as a jungler, playing Morgana today. Huge credit to the support staff and coaching staff behind G2. Imagine being in their ready room. Imagine hearing those players go, we're gonna funnel Pike on final stage. Imagine saying, can you do better than 25 minutes? And G2 is saying, yeah, I'll give you 18. And now Ocelot building this roster, taking the gamble. He celebrates his moment in the glory as well. You know, and that's what it was. This roster was a risk. When we saw it at the beginning of the split, one of the biggest questions was, could Perks compete with the best in that position? Could this roster, this mishmash of talent, really compete 
and they just prove to the world that not only can they compete, they can dominate. This roster is a celebration of League of Legends. They play the game the way my solo queue feels. It is with passion. It is a celebration. Ahoy, Rotterdam! It is G2 Esports! Spare a thought for every other LEC team that is bowing down to G2. It has been happening all split long. And G2 will now go on to an even bigger stage to look for more competition. Because Europe could not provide an answer. Last year, Europe, they made it to the finals of the World Championship. G2, along with Fnatic, made it to the semi-finals. This team, this, this organization, we heard it from Ocelot, their goal was to overcome that. They wanted to be, they wanted to bring a title back to Europe. And that's why they took this gamble. That's why they built this roster. And the way in which they won this final, the way in which they look so dominant, all eyes are now on G2. All eyes are looking at this European superstar roster to see how they will compete against the best around the world. I absolutely love seeing the lap of honor here, celebrating in front of 9,000 fans in Rotterdam. There's some beautiful irony to where it all began the last time G2 and OG faced off against each other. But this was a very, 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 very different showing. And now it comes down to expectations. What do we have for G2? But yes, they are filling in the, the shoes that Fnatic have paved for them in making that world final. But can G2 do one better? They didn't get the chance to face Fnatic in the final today, but they can do one better and bring home an international title for Europe. And what a statement. I mean, Going into MSI, looking at the funnel comp, looking at AP Nico Bot, <laughs> looking at Zaya Rakan, like, good luck to everybody else. I mean, all I'm looking at is the rematch of Faker and Perks, except this time it's in a different position, right? <laughs> like, the last time they met, the last MSI, I believe it was 2017, uh, Perks had some very impressive showings against Faker, but now he's, Perks is saying, I have one better. I have my younger brother, my superstar, my MVP. Good luck to Faker. I mean, that's really the, the best part about this G2 roster is that we get to now send internationally not just Caps, but Perks and Faker. <laughs> and he's probably going to play mid lane champions at least once <laughs> anyway, right? So we've definitely not seen the end of that. Rotterdam, I have to say thank you so much for the cheers and the volume and the noise. You guys have been fantastic. I do have to ask one last time before they're, they're going to take my microphone away. Rotterdam, what is your region? Thank you so much for hosting us. Thank you so much, everybody watching online. We are not done. We have several interviews coming up. We have PGL being set up as well. The Shocks and many, many members of G2 Esports, but there wasn't enough game time to truly celebrate both of these teams. <laughs> It was an 18-minute final game. I know. It was basically an 18-minute eulogy to <laughs> Orgy. And I know we're in, in, in celebration mode, but I have to pick up on that point, Frost Gurren. Spare a thought for Origin. Spare a thought for the new LEC playoff format. They came in and dismantled Fnatic yesterday. But G2 was a bridge too far for them to overcome. I... I don't know, we were looking at the speed of that game and it just turned to that moment where I look at Vettius, I look at you, I'm like, I guess we're just complimenting G2 today. I guess this is just the highlight reel. G2 doing their lap of honor around this fantastic crowd in the Ahoy, Ahoy Arena. The smiles on their faces. And also, Perks now starting to build his, his goal. He wants to be one of the greatest players in, EU, uh, in League of Legends history. And he's won titles in the mid lane. He's now won his first titles as an AD carry. And now he looks on to bigger and brighter things. This man, he has goals, and he is well on his way to achieving. Did Yellowstar win titles in both ADC and support? I believe he did. So now yes, he did. He did indeed. Perks has not only tied up the record of titles, yes. but also the record of role, swaps that were role successful. swapping and grabbing the title. Absolutely the case. Um, it wouldn't be a, a cast without a quick stat, and this one is both painful and celebratory. Coming into today, the quickest finals that we've ever had in terms of game time 
was G2 Esports beating Misfits in summer 2017. It took them a total of 104 game minutes. Today's record beats that by over 30 minutes. G2 smashed their own previous record and won a European Championship final in a combined game time of 74 minutes and 32 seconds. That is one hell of a quick <laughs> final stat. It's not even 7 p.m., Trevor. <laughs> I mean, we can make dinner. That's amazing. <laughs> I think they had dinner reservations, but it just... I, I, it boggles my mind, 30 minutes quicker. Guys, wrap it up. I've got dinner reservations. I need this to be done in 20 minutes. Oh, uh, my word. You have to, of course, take into account different games, different rosters, but just, it, it's just an, That is dominance. An that is illumination that is nothing, of dominance. That is nothing but, like, and you, you can't take anything away from Origin. Origin is a good team. Yes. Like, Origin is strong, and G2 made them look like nothing. Am I allowed to be a little bit selfish? Of course. Oh, how's that tattoo going? Ah! <laughs> So, Frost Curran, please inform our viewers. There was a bet that was made between Trevor and I on eu 4 at the start. I said G2 will win the split, and if they do, Trevor must get a tattoo of a frog. <laughs> I'm thinking right here. No, I, no, it will not. It will not be. I will. I am a man of my word. I will get the tattoo in the summer split. We will record it. I just need to figure out which got different problems. To get more insight on G2's win, Law is ready with three of the players. Thank you very much, guys, and thank you all for joining me on stage. Congratulations on winning the first LEC final. Give it all, guys, one more time. Thank you. Gaps, uh, I saw you three hours before. I guess winning the MVP wasn't enough for you. You're also the first player in Europe to win a split with two different teams. Is it special for you? I mean, it means a lot, right? Yeah. Uh, obviously, I feel like we talked so much about it already, but we took a lot of risks going on this team. <laughs> it's obviously pretty crazy, Luca going AD. Um, and to see us play like this in the final, in front of so many people, and we still have the confidence, and we still have the, uh, we still go for the, the plays, you know, through fun and all these kind of things, it's, it's, it's crazy. And that's what makes you so successful here. Jankos, I gotta ask, um, <laughs> what do you think about having playing supports in the jungle again? <laughs> what do you think about having to play supports in the jungle again? Nice memories, I guess. Honestly, I mean, my team is really good, right? So I just picked Morgana, wave cleared bot lane, and um, it was really boring, but we won, so I'm happy. What's... Well, Go ahead. at least it was not Brom. At least so it was not Brom. I think we were a good bot lane. <laughs> this, this is also important for you. I mean, this is your first title as, as a champion, I mean, guys, you've been, you've been playing for seven years. This is your first title. How happy are you right now? Uh, I think I was really calming game by the end of game three because I knew that we will win. Um, so right now I'm actually don't, I'm not very emotional. I'm just very happy that we won, I guess, but my eyes are on MSI because I never ever played against Faker in a serious game. And even though I'm a jungler, I kind of want to go to MSI and play, you know. We'll get back to MSI later. Now I turn to the coach. I mean, props to you also. You built an amazing team. How proud are you right now of your team and the guys and what they pulled yesterday today? I mean, of course you're proud if you go with those guys for half a year. Um, they're really annoying, but in the end it worked out. So. Um, I'm happy, but at the same time, four more weeks, especially with Caps and Jankos, could be a bit rough on my own nerves, but of course, such a final is amazing. Can you talk me through what happened in game two, please? Because nobody was expecting a draft like that. Can you talk me through what happened in game two? Because nobody was expecting a draft like that. I mean, in game two, basically, we went into the game and said, okay, Stonar Turret is a thing. It's really annoying. What else is annoying? So funnel. And we had experience from last year, and so we just out annoyed them. And it's a headache for every analyst out there. <laughs> I was hearing backstage that G2 may be the best team Europe has seen ever. Do you agree, Caps? Well, I mean, we're going to have to prove that at MSI, right? So uh, I, think, I think we definitely have the, the potential, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we still have a lot of teams to beat. Vega is also there, you know, so 
gonna have to win some games first. <laughs> yeah, you'll be playing against the likes of Team Liquid, T1 you mentioned. <laughs> And I guess you also want to take your revenge on IG if they qualify. Yeah, so I'm a bit mixed, right? Because I kind of want IG to win, but then again, then my dream doesn't go through, so I, I'm, I'm a bit split, honestly, in the JG IG series. Jankos, what, what are your thoughts on the teams that already qualified to MSI? Um, I mean, like I mentioned before, I can't Take wait care. to play yeah. SKT, um, except for that, uh, either it's, you know, IG or... Oh, JG, which, you know, are two very good teams as well. So, I mean, we'll just practice. We'll go for Korean bootcamp and just try to do our best. That's also NA. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess that's... Whoopsie. That's kind of irrelevant, I guess, like... You heard it first here. No vacation before MSI this time, please. So, what are you guys going to do? Prepare in Korea? Uh, yeah, the plan is to go for Korea for two weeks, I believe. Okay. And from there, we go to Vietnam. And hopefully we can learn a lot because, of course, every team that will be really good. And we still have things to work on, so we're really happy going there. Well, I wish you good luck on that, and I'm really looking forward to see you in MSI. Guys, one more time for G2 Esports! <laughs> now back to the casters. Take it away, guys. Thank you very much, Law, and congratulations once again. Look at the celebrations on stage. For Caps and for Perks, winning is standard. But he's done it in two roles. And Perks and Caps have brought Mickey, Wonder, and Yankos. I don't know, Trevor, that doesn't look like a standard reaction. <laughs> I think you kind of underlined it with the fact that Perks is able to do it so many times. This G2 roster was, was built around him. We kind of talk about, you know, the, the star players, the players that are continuously left over on these rosters, you know, upset for Schalke, Kabe for Splice, and G2 and Perks go synonymous hand in hand. And to move from yeah. mid lane to ADC, you just proved all the haters wrong. I can so do it in both positions. About those power rankings before the split began, <laughs> Perks has got something to say about it. But uh, uh, one of the things for me is, you know, Many fans like to joke about how we talk about the kings of Europe, but when you win a title, you become the kings. Yes. But for me, this era, this this kingdom looks one that looks to be controlled with a firm hand because well, this G2 looks so scary. I'm so fascinated to see how long they can hold on to the crown. And there's three people that are at the helm. The three of, I mean, all of them are right, but we have <laughs> to pick three for Kia Player of the Series: Wonder, Caps, and Perks. Go at LOL Esports on Twitter and go and vote. Who is the Kia Player of the Series for your LEC Finals? Um, I, I, it's, it's, it, it's, it's so, so difficult. You, you like can't. Wonder is the I'm man. I'm sick that of being asked this question <laughs> about this team. I think it has to be Wonder. I think it has to be. I think his performance against Alfari, yes, he did get a lot of resources, but Wonder time and time again was the guy who was stepping up in these key team fights while the rest yes. of his team was getting going, especially in that final composition. That Baron fight when the Rise just absolutely dominated was all Wonder. I think it's one of those things as well where you think back to the beginning of Wonder's career, people were saying he should be benched, he's a terrible top laner, he was super linear and he could only play carries top lane, and now he's at a point where he's considered one of the greatest top laners that the West has. I remember at Worlds, we were seeing Wonder just dominate people on Camille, and you and Deficio were just like gobs on. You're like, he's not even the best top laner in Europe. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> now, this, this, this is both impressive and amazing because not only has uh, Wonder surprised, we heard Yamato talking about the previous days when, you know, Yamato almost benched him back in the splice days, right? Uh, but also many, many uh, people talking on, online about how Wonder could even be a better player than Caps, you know? Papa Smithy started that discussion. Yeah. We're going to get to see what Wonder and Caps can do on the international stage. We're not there yet. Uh, we do almost have the stage ready. And we saw some great action here in Rotterdam as we close out the LEC Spring Finals. Let's look back at some of the best moments in our Alienware Big Plays. Yesterday, Origin and Mithy destroyed Fnatic's Sona Tarek bot lane. The Spanish legend returned to the big stage on a mission, killing Fnatic's title hopes with a power fist. Mithy looking for oh, yeah, the one. <laughs> Nemesis not quite the target you want to grab. That's the three-man knock could turn massively. The Scion Zombie is going to be huge. Now we see the Ganko coming in, however. Cold lane down the wall, but the turn. Classic TP's bot lane coming in from Fnatic. Nemesis ready to turn this play. Hillisang is going to give up his light. Trying to protect this one, but very difficult to hold that. Mithy flash. Oh, 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 oh
And, you know, Mithy came into this uh, region again or returned to the region with a lot of doubt. You know, people are saying he's washed up, he can't do it, he didn't perform it. in NA, and he proved everyone wrong. Bend it like Beckham around some of those creeps with the power fist. He was telling me today that this is his seventh finals appearance in Europe, and it is his seventh split in Europe. Yeah. The man has quite the history, and he always performs. He does unlucky number seven today. Not able to pick up the win today. Second game, G2 shocked everybody, including Origin, when they went for a funnel comp. What happened next will go down in the history books. Keep clicking to find out. The fact that they gave, the fact that they gave Cole the rec side, but he doesn't get to just power off. All right, there's an early flash from Perks already, but look at the turnaround damage. Mickey's going low, defensive flash. Mickey survives. First blood picks. And now we are setting up for a potential oh, dive. Oh no, Mithy and Patrick, they need to use the Cosmic Radiance flawlessly. That's going to be the time in just in time. Yes. All right, Mithy, got the flash. Crescendo by surprise and instantly killed. I will look for binding, or you want to look for something first? Okay, while well, we are looking. Remember they have solo, okay? Yeah, okay, no solo. Look, 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 Back up, back up, no? I believe that might be the quickest. We're going to confirm with stats. Look at the re-engage. Cosmic Red survives some time. Slacy Monster does so much damage. Imagine if Origin were not 8,000 gold down. They've got themselves a one for one. Here's the re-engage. Mithy gets chunked out. The knock up and the dash away from Mickey. Now Wonders are going to run down the rest of the team. Mithy gets blocked. The shield from Wonder. The dive from Caps. Whew. That was indeed pretty insane. And I didn't even notice the first time around, but Mickey actually survived that final play by procking the Guardian, Guardian to burn the Ignite as well. Like, that duel is so terrifying. Like, oh, I can't wait to see these guys play more League of Legends. I would, like, I would have liked to have seen more today. <laughs> uh, as we just saw, G2 didn't stop there. They secured the first LEC title with a win in game three. Let's check out the final fight. They now have a benchmark to work towards. I mean, to be fair, no one could contest G2. Basically, they took a vacation Ooh. in the back half of their summer split to prepare for this moment. One, two, three, goodbye! That's going to be a taunt out from Mithy, but G2 Esports inside the base. Can they finish this before 20 minutes? Pop Blossom goes down. Perks and the rest of G2, they may be looking to set the fastest win of European finals history. They're pushing onto the Nexus turret. Oh, they're back. Oh, oh, they're oh my god. We can end it with Herald, we can end it with Herald. Oh, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Empto, empto, empto. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hit me, hit it. Can we end though? Like, it's T, T, nah, we really can end. Yeah, I'm moving, I'm moving. He's not done. I'm hitting soon, I'm hitting soon, I'm hitting soon. 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 Yeah, TB, he's low. Just Aatrox, 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 I don't know if Nico is OP or G2 are just OP. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the easy answer, G2 are OP. Damn, those Anything they well. play. Those I can't believe at 16 minutes 50 on the clock, they're going end, 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 end. Uh, what you guys are seeing on your screen right now is the engraver currently putting the player names onto the trophy. The first ever LEC split concludes, and the players will have their names and the team immortalized for all time. Very cool stuff. G2 starting off a new potential dynasty uh, hit with the LEC. And oh, what a way to do it. Quickest final series in European history by 30 minutes. Total game time, 74 minutes and 32 seconds. They beat their own record when G2 Smash Misfits 3-0 in summer of 2017. By what, 30, over 30 minutes? Over 30. The previous record was 104, and they dropped it to 74. So it's, it's <laughs> a couple seconds change. Wow. But anyways, Pretty crazy. For Oscar and Vedius, thank you so much for joining me on this very short evening's work. Let's head down on stage where Sharks is ready with some of the LEC Spring Champions.